Now, in that statement, he said that whether anyone liked it or not, the majority in the next parliament, which is this parliament, was going to introduce a motion to set up a Justice and Peace Commission to probe or inquire into June 4 and 31st December. There was an uproar from both sides of the House, and um, you were shown clearly walking out of the House, apparently uh, in opposition and in disgust to this what he had said. This is a case of a genuine coincidence. <laughs> This is a clear case now, of, of coincidence. I want, to be I want to be clear in my mind whether you were opposed to the timing of what he was saying or you were opposed to the content or the idea of setting up such a commission. And what is your own opinion on that? I, I prefer to answer the latter. Um, uh, I, I left the chamber when the discussion was on. And I think that the, uh, insofar as we all do that, as you know perfectly well, I don't think that any particular significance should be placed on the times I get up and leave the chamber and come back. But my own view is, is, is this, is that at some stage or another, we're going to have to come to grips with that whole era and its consequences. We want to come to grips with it in a way whereby the peace, the stability, the progress of our country is not jeopardized. We're required in this country, like in many other countries in the world, to make a decision as to how we deal with our past. By and large, the nation is ready to say that the, what has happened in the past, let bygones be bygones. But there's still the, 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 the situation involving the victim people who have, whose, whose sufferings in one way or another cannot be so easily alleviated just by words. That a mechanism, some kind of mechanism was already in place when you were in. If you want to see that over and over again, go to our Facebook page, Good Evening Ghana Official, and you see it over and over again. Later this year, we'll be bringing you a lot more, and we are still putting a new documentary together to be ready for Ghana's 50th and 60th anniversary. Uh, it, will, it will be fantastic, hopefully, by the grace of God. So you should get ready for that. It will be released sometime in the first week of March. Later tonight, uh, scholar and lawyer, uh, Moses Fuamwini, and sports administrator, will be joining us to assess President Akufado's first three days or four days in office. We will be spending time to talk about the 13 ministers who have been nominated today by the president uh, for positions, various positions uh, appearing to be in his cabinet as well. Um, he will, we will also spend a little bit of time to talk about why there was no sports ministry, given that uh, the black stars are about to hit Gabon for the African Cup of Nations. The sports minister would have been named an expeditious veteran would have occurred so that there will be clear leadership, political leadership at the tournament. Apparently, Mr. Akufado doesn't think so, so he didn't name a sports minister as part of the first list. Why didn't he do that? We'll, we'll find out. And um, also, the, 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 he said, Mr. Akufado, uh, President Akufado said this evening, that um, the Ministry of Petroleum will be reunited with the Ministry of Power and will be designated as a Ministry of Energy. And it has been handed over to Infantspum Old Boy Boache Ejakum. My guest, Moses, also is an Infantspum Old Boy. Uh, Infantspum is the second best boys' school in Ghana, the first best being Presbyterian Boys' Secondary School, Presec at Legon. So we are not worried about the uh, mention of Infantspum. Uh, as, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you have seen Mr. Isan comments post on Facebook. Presec is first and Infants Premier second. We'll talk about, about that uh, uh, decoupling which President Mahama did, which Mr. Uh, President Akufado has now reunited as Ministry of Energy. Moses will be here for all that. For the next seven minutes, we'll see the interview that uh, the Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quay granted to me a few minutes after he had been sworn in as Speaker in that midnight event in Parliament um, last Friday, Saturday dawn, uh, however you want to look at it. Here is the interview with Michael Quay, seven minutes long. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for giving us the first opportunity to hear from you after you left uh, the swearing-in from the Chamber of Parliament. Were you tensed of sorts uh, at the beginning? It was a sort of homecoming, so there was not much of a difficulty. Did you feel a sense of nostalgia? Yes, naturally. Homecoming is always nostalgic after a long absence. What did you notice in the Chamber that is different and that may have impressed you? Oh, everything was quite impressive. I mean, the usual hilarity and conviviality. And I was impressed with members' welcome. You gave a speech that appeared like a, a policy statement. And you said about private members' bill, 
and it looked like you had you were listened to attentively. Is this something you actually intend to pursue? I intend to pursue it vigorously. In fact, I will tell you that when the president-elect first uh, met me on this matter of being a speaker, I suggested it to him, and he was in agreement. Mm. And I feel very, very confident, therefore, that the legislature and the executive are going to be in tandem so far as this particular issue is concerned. You see, succeeding speakers had held from what the Constitution provides that if only a thing would be a charge on public funds, which of course then includes even every paper that is used, then it can only be introduced, a bill in that regard can only be introduced by the executive. And we copied this from the British. They've departed from it. And a, a charge has been too broadly interpreted. But we don't need a constitutional amendment to this. It's because if that thing will mean raising money, then of course you must consult those who hold the purse. Mm. And that's why in Britain, legislation is clearly defined in many categories, and we have got money bills. This will not be a money bill at all. And I collected a whole volume of private members' uh, bills, which have become uh, laws from the British uh, uh, Parliament. So we are lagging behind. You know, suppose in Parliament, members of Parliament, so it's necessary to help bring about a law on what I, we all know is a mess of collecting custom duties. And we bring laws of the best practices from other parts of the world so as to improve our system of revenue collection. How can you say this be a charge on the public funds. Rather, it will add to the public funds. So laws on environment, gender, and such social issues in particular can be introduced by members of parliament and be added to legislation with the full support of the executive in the long run mm -hmm. without any difficulty at all. Very often you see that the work in the House is stalled because we are waiting on government to bring something that we work on. We will now work towards bringing something and working uh, um, and thereon. And I believe that issues such as affirmative action law, the role of women in parliament, an affirmative action law that will increase uh, women participation in politics, you cannot say this is a charge on public funds. So actually, we have not done ourselves good service by that narrow interpretation which I will lead Parliament to broaden. Don't you think that will open a floodgates of frivolous laws, vexatious, and so every day you have somebody coming up wanting to sponsor a bill of all different kinds? You know, bills are discussed in some general detail by leadership before they are taken up in the open. And the beauty about this, furthermore, is the committee stage where members will now sit, really decipher that proposed legislation, and see the value thereof. If a bill does not really deserve serious consideration, it's not likely to go beyond the committee state. But better to have what you may call more of frivolities, so that we now sift, is that not so, mm. than not have members as busy at all. Sometimes we realize that unless the executive prompts us, it looks as if there's not enough work to do. And I've seen succeeding uh, uh, speakers, you know, lamenting, for example, the absence of a minister to come and answer questions on the House. When we take ourselves more seriously, we'll be able to check these things. How you said in your speech that they and caution the major majority uh, to be cautious and allow the minority to participate and also be able to speak. But this is a very overwhelming majority that the MPP has. And here is a speaker who is also a blue blood MPP. What kind of assurances should the majority have, uh, to the minority have, that they will not be overrun in this parliament? I believe you saw in their own attitude mm. and the reception given me by. Uh, Honorable Arun Edisu here, mm. 
that they know I can be very even. You know, when you put on the robe of a referee, you must act accordingly. And definitely, the one one in calling speakers will continue to prevail. In other words, one member for the majority, the other for the minority, and so on and so forth. So there'll be adequate opportunity for the minority to contribute, irrespective of the nature of the majority. It's not as if it is two to one because we have a large majority. Whether the majority large, medium, or narrow, it will still be a matter of one on each side by way of sequence of contribution. When you gave your vision, you didn't talk about the other institutions in parliament, the office of the clerk, the office of public affairs, security, etc. You don't have any plans for them? Oh, there's, there's, there, we, we have a lot of plans. In fact, you will see it in the uh, body of the speech. And it talks about the entire staff by way of research, advancement in their, uh, broadening their horizons and other things. And I did uh, acknowledge, for example, the particular role of the clerk and the supporting staff. As you remember, I did say that when Parliament reconvened in 1993, there was only one person who had seen Parliament before. Mm. I mean, this was a serious dent to Parliament. Institutional memory was so poor. So all those people who helped to re-establish the importance of Parliament and its ways of doing things, the reviving the practices, the institutional memory as much as possible. I mean, I've got a lot of respect for them. Uh, and the clerks and others are those who give a lot of directions. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the uh, Speaker Quist. Was he your favorite among himself, Nia Maole, no, with Griffiths Randolph? No, I was not DFN making any comparison whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, I simply was talking about chronology. He was the first speaker, mm -hmm. and he happened only to be, uh, also to be from my, my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was worthy of mention. So it's, uh, it's 2.25 a.m. in the morning. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Thank you Thank very you much. for the opportunity. I'm sure that we'll see you at the uh, Independence Square. We trust that everything goes smoothly, and we shall put this country on the right track, both in terms of legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. Thank you, sir. Thanks. So that was um, Michael Quay speaking to us, 2.35 a.m. in the morning on Saturday. It was a very long night at Parliament, but thankfully everything went well. And later on, Independence Square was great as well. And we showed you pictures of that. Good evening, lawyer. Good evening, Paul. Are you what? enjoying the new Ghana? Is there, is there a new Ghana? No, I'm enjoying your kente. <laughs> <laughs> you look uh, pretty good in that. Thank and, you very uh, much. I think it's great. It was, all over, it was all over the place. Um, yes, at, on at, Indep at, at Independence Hill. Square. I think it was also a demonstration of the Ghanaian culture. And I think we can all congratulate ourselves. It was just joyous. It was, you know, showed all of Ghana in its brilliance. And I think it wasn't just a success for one the winning party, but for the whole country. And I think mm -hmm. to the extent that we showed ourselves uh, in, positively, I think we should be proud of what we did. Because compared to what's happening in Gambia, really, that's rather sad. Mm -hmm. So Ghana once again shone, and, and, and I think that we can be proud of ourselves. And the